You know, I actually like Windows, especially once I add a few modifications, install RetroBar, install OpenShell, clean up some of the stuff. I like it. What I don't like is Microsoft, all their telemetry, their AI nonsense, their search, their advertisements right in your start menu. I don't like any of that stuff. So let's remove it in this video. I'm going to be showing you the stuff on Windows 11, but most of these things will also work on Windows 10. So you can disable telemetry, remove the live search or the active web search or whatever from your start menu, remove the advertisements, and then we're going to go a step farther and also remove Cortana and I'll show you how to disable the Copilot AI stuff that's, you know, in the latest versions of Windows. I'm not going to touch on the Windows recall. That's a big mess right now, and it's kind of a moving target. So we'll wait and see what happens with that, and then we'll make another video talking about just disabling that security nightmare. Before you do any of that, let's go ahead and get your copy of Windows activated. This is Who Keys, where I get my Windows OEM keys. Now, what's the difference in an OEM key and a regular key? Well, an OEM key is generally a one-time installation that is locked to your hardware. That means you can come over here and grab this, install it on your current machine, and then that's it. But if you look at the outrageous prices from Microsoft, note that you'll have to buy this one many, many, many times to equal the price of one regular Microsoft key. And we also have not a 21% discount. We've got a 25% discount with the coupon code TS25. You got Windows 11 Pro, Windows 10 Pro, and I just want to note that Windows 10 Pro, right now at the time of this, will still unlock Windows 11. So you can save a little bit of money, get a Windows 10 Pro key, but Google it before you do it. If it's like, you know, later on than right now, you can get Windows 10 Home. But again, a lot of the stuff I'm talking about in this video will not work on Home. So if it will. You can get Windows 11 Home, Windows 10 Home. We also have a couple different flavors of Office, so you're not tied to the monthly payment plans from Microsoft. You can just get this one time, install it on your machine, and then you're good to go. And again, these are OEM keys as well. So let's go ahead and grab a copy. I'll just get Windows 11 Pro right here. Come down here and click on Buy It Now. And then once we get over here to the Buy It Now page, you have your coupon code. Type in TS25, apply that, and now let's watch that price come down so much better than the retail. I'm going to go ahead and submit my order. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here. Go to your user center, click on my purchase orders, just view keys and codes, and you can just copy and paste your key. Hit start, type activate, click on activation settings, paste it in there, click on next, and you will be activated. So head on over to whokeys.com to get yourself an OEM Windows key at a price that makes sense. So that's it. Now you've got a copy of Windows 11 Pro. You can do pretty much everything in this video with Windows 11 Pro, and namely that's editing some of the group policies. I'll show you other, other ways around this. So if you only have Windows Home, don't fret. There's gonna be multiple different ways to do the same thing in this video. You don't want to be using an online Microsoft account if you're worried about telemetry. So in this video, I'm going to assume that you're using an offline account. If you don't know what that means or you've accidentally signed in because they're always trying to get you to sign up with a Microsoft online account, well, it's relatively easy to sign out of your online account and then log back in using an offline account. I'll make a video on that just in a couple of days, so just watch the channel for that. It's really simple, and you'll be able to switch from an online Microsoft account to an offline account to, again, improve your security and a whole bunch of other things. So I would not use a Microsoft account like at all. Go ahead and click on Start before we do this, and I want you to create a restore point. By typing restore and you'll see create a restore point right there. So come on up here, you'll see system protection. If it's not turned on, you'll need to configure it and say turn on system protection. Tell it how much space it can use. Let's say I can use, I don't know, 12 gigabytes, whatever. You want to use maybe 10-15% of your disk space depending on what you got. All right, there we go. Apply. So I'm turning it on. Hit OK. There we go. And then we can click on create to create a restore point and then title this before, I don't know, whatever. You can call it before a lockdown. Whatever, I don't know, because we're going to lock this down a little bit. All right, just give it a second and let it finish creating this restore point. While we're waiting, we can go ahead and do stuff. There we go. It was quick. So this is going to be a really in-depth video. Um, I'm going to make it really easy at the end of the video. I'll show you the method that I use, which only requires a couple different clicks, and it takes care of pretty much everything I'm going to talk about. But I want to show you what's going on, so I'm going to show you the manual ways to do all of these different things. And I'm going to show you multiple different methods so that if you know Microsoft changes something, well, then maybe one of the other methods will work. Because some Sometimes, you know, they'll make a change to one of their settings or whatever, and it's like, ah, that doesn't work anymore. So by showing you how to do this in multiple different ways, that means when Microsoft changes something, you'll be able to come back to the video and be like, aha, there's another way to do this. Now, the most basic way uh, to do this is to go right into your Windows modern settings and just make a few changes. So the easiest way to open up your modern settings is to press your Windows key and I. 
Let's talk about just securing things a little bit and getting rid of some of the telemetry. So we can come up here and type advertising. And by up here, I mean inside your settings. And over here, it's got like, you know, all these checkboxes here for show me suggested content, new, no, let Windows improve start and search results, just turn all this off. And then we can go and click on privacy and security. We have activity history. I wanna turn my activity history off. There we go. You can clear your history. Click on privacy again and we'll scroll back down. And we also have search permissions right down here. Cloud content. Allow Windows to provide search blah, 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 blah. No. Microsoft account. Uh, worker school. I'm just going to turn all this off. History off. Uh, more settings. Show search highlights. I don't want any of this stuff. So there we go. I've turned all that off. And this thing still searches the web. Now we're going to disable telemetry just like we just did. We're going to do that through the registry. So press start and I'm using the open shell. So I'll just use the regular thing so everybody can see the same thing. And I'm gonna type regedit, R-E-G, edit. And there we go, registry editor. All right, we're gonna to navigate to some things. When you first open it up, it's gonna look like this. All right, so once you're into your registry, you'll have like a bunch of little folders over here. So we're gonna go navigate to H key local machine. And then from there, we're gonna go down to software. And then we're gonna click on policies down here, then Microsoft. Then I'm gonna go down to Windows. Now I'm gonna click on data collection and you'll see allow telemetry right here. You want to make sure allow telemetry says zero. If that's not there, you can right click, click on new and do D word 32 bit value and then you'll title it allow telemetry. I've already got allow telemetry. So once it's there, you just double click, make sure that's zero, hit okay and then restart your computer and you have disabled telemetry. So I wanna show you how to disable telemetry using group policies. So just push start and type GP edit and you'll get your local group policy editor. Now from inside this window, let me expand it a little bit so you can see it. All right, so you wanna to go to your computer configuration, administrative tools, windows components, and then you'll see data collection and preview builds right there. So click on that and there's a whole bunch of stuff over here. So all the way at the bottom, there's configure collection of browsing data for desktop analytics and we can disable that. Now this used to have an allow telemetry thing, but I've already turned that off. So maybe that's why it's not here, but it, maybe it's a new version of Windows that's moved that. But as you can see, there is no option here for allow telemetry. Normally you'd wanna to toggle that off. So you can log in here and if you see allow telemetry, you can double click it and toggle that off. Then you'll need to restart your computer. And that's how you do it from inside the group policy editor. Another optional step that we can take to just make sure everything is disabled, we can disable the connected user experiences and telemetry service, and that's just a service that's running. So in order to get there, press your Windows key, press R, and then type services.msc, and that'll bring up our services window. We're looking for this, connected user experiences and telemetry. Double click on that, click on startup type, and make sure that it is disabled right there. Hit apply. And now when you reboot your computer, this will not be running, so you won't have to worry about your connected user experiences and telemetry starting with your computer. That's disabled. All right, I've already done this before, so I don't need to restart, but you wanna restart after all this is done. All right, next up, we're gonna disable the internet results in search. You know, like when you start typing anything here, blah, 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 and it starts bringing, what in the, hold <laughs> this, song, I didn't know this was a thing. Uh, yeah, it starts bringing up all this web stuff. You know, I don't want that. And then it just, it's a, it's a mess. It slows things down. So the way that I normally do this is by replacing the entire start menu with open shell or something like that. This is, it's not lining up correctly because I'm using it with something else, but I've got open shell right here. That's what I recommend. But if you really want to keep the Microsoft start menu, you can still disable all the web search, speed it up, and improve your, I guess, improve your security and privacy a little bit. I don't know if that matters that much for this, but let's go ahead and do that. Type GP edit for our group policy editor. There we go, it comes up pretty quickly. All right, so let's go to our computer configuration and we wanna to go to administrative templates. Then let's go down to Windows components and then we'll scroll all the way down to search. All right, inside search. Well, we got a couple different things here. First thing I wanna do is just disable Cortana. Good, disable Cortana, gone. So since we're here, we'll go ahead and knock that one out. All right, and then right here, you'll see do not allow web search, which is not in alphabetical order. I don't know why. What, what's this thing fully disable search UI? All right, do not allow web search. Double click on that. And we want to put enabled right there because we want to enable the disabling. That's so um, confusing. Disable, you want to enable the disabling of web search. So yes, hit apply, and then we can restart. So this is the easiest way to do it, and Microsoft will absolutely... Um, you know, look at this and be like, okay, no web search. 
So that's how we do it with our group policy editor. Now, if that doesn't work, which I don't see why, well, that's the, probably the best way to do it. We can also do this by editing the registry. It's a little more advanced. So let's go ahead and edit the registry and disable our web search. In order to do this, it's going to be a little bit more advanced. We're going to edit the registry. So type reg edit up here and you'll see registry editor. It's going to be like, hey, you want to do this? Yes. All right. So this is what you'll see. It's very small. I'll try to zoom in just a little bit for you. Now, what we're going to need to do here is navigate to H key current user. So click on that. Then we want to go down to software. Then we want to go to policies and then we want to go to Microsoft. And then we want to go to Windows. And then we want Explorer. Now right here, we want to create a new D word by right clicking. You'll see new. Go down and do D word 32 bit value. There we go. The title of this D word is disable search box suggestions. You want to capitalize each word and it's all one thing with no spaces. So disable search box suggestions press enter. Now we can double click that and it'll ask us to enter a value. So I'm going to do a value of one, which means yes and zero means no. So yes, I do want to disable search box suggestions, hit OK. And now we can close this. We'll likely have to restart. So I'm going to do like Star Wars and you'll see it's searching right here. So let's restart and see what happens. All right, we're back. Hit start. Let's right, type Star Wars again. And look at that. It's only searching our computer. We don't have all kinds of bloat and nonsense anymore. I think that's wonderful. Now I'm going to download a program called OO Shut Up 10, and this works on Windows 11 as well. And this is kind of a nuclear option, so I'll put all these links in the description. It's OO hyphen Shut Up 10. Now we're going to download this, and I'll show you what it does. And this is something that's I'd say slightly controversial because it does so many different things, and people are afraid that it'll break. You know, every time you like restart your Windows or whatever, they're afraid it'll break. I've been using this for years. I've been using it ever since day one, pretty much of Windows 10, but not really. But you know what I mean. What this allows you to do is come in and say, you know, disable my advertising ID, and disable suggestions in timeline, disable suggestions in start. You can, you know, one click disable all kinds of things. But there's something that's very easy. If you just click on Actions up here on the top, click click on Apply Only Recommended Settings. 89 settings have been successfully set. I have never had a problem with this, you know, applying only the recommended. Then you can come over and like go through and say like, all right, I want to maybe do a few more things. Uh, disabling access to your microphone. I use my microphone a lot. I'm using it right now. So I'm going to leave that open. Uh, but you know, I don't want my call history on here. Phone calls and call history don't need that. So you can disable any little thing, radios, whatever. You can go through this and disable all kinds of different things. Now note that every time you have an update on Windows, a lot of these things will get reverted. So you'll just have to run this program again. You can restart Windows now if you want to. I'll do it later. But I want to show you something. This program, it doesn't install. It's just right here inside my downloads folder. So if you wanted to, I'm going to grab that and this config file, and I'm going to cut this, and I'm just going to paste it into my documents where I always see it. Whatever, right there. So now, every time I do an update, I know I need to go to my documents, double-click this, run O and O, shut up 10 again, and then, you know, we'll be okay. All right, so let's say you start up Windows and then, like, nothing's working. You got a blank screen like this. Well, I've got my special task manager here. I'll even get rid of that. There we go. There's nothing. So this has never happened to me, but just in case it does happen to you, you got nothing but you can see your mouse. Well, that means that something is causing Windows Explorer, which is your basically your desktop environment, it's not, it's not loading. So you just push Control Shift Escape and that'll bring up your task manager. And then from here, we can do a couple different things. We can run a new task. We can run Explorer if we want. Press Enter. And now we're back in our desktop. So if that doesn't work, you can do the same thing. Control Shift Escape and that'll bring this window up. Do Run New Task and type Control. So from in here, we can either uh, go to our Restore Points and do large icons so everybody can see this stuff by going to recovery right here. Open system restore right here, next. And then we can pick a restore point to restore from. And we're doing all this without you know, being logged into Windows fully. So as long as you maintain uh, restore points at a reasonable rate, then you'll be just fine. Another thing that you can do while you're in here is let's say maybe you're, there's a program or something you've installed recently that's causing issues. Well, if you can't get into your Explorer, well, right in here we have, where's the programs and stuff? Programs and features right here. And remember this, it's the old school memory of everything you've got installed. So let's say open shell's causing some trouble. Maybe win arrow tweaker. Oh no, something's causing trouble. Just double click on that. You want to remove this from your system and all of its components? Well, yes. There we go. I want to note that I've got all these things running on the latest beta build of Windows and it's working just fine. So there you have it. Very easy to do. I'm going to go ahead and open up Explorer. So we've logged out of our Microsoft account. We've disabled a lot of the telemetry. We've disabled our advertising ID. We've removed all the web search 
from the start menu and made Windows a lot more usable. So here's what we got going on over here. Ooh, that's huge. Let me just make it a little smaller. These are on sale. Everything's on sale. So not everything, but these and these still on sale. So we got the keyboard and the mouse still on sale. 20 bucks. I'm not going to sell this too hard. I love it. It's uh, the poppiest membrane keys I've ever felt, and it's water resistant. And then we also have our mouse flawless sensor. And to me, it feels, let me show you here. It's all this junk on my desk. It feels a lot like an Intelli mouse, like the old school. Not quite, but I kind of wanted that sort of size and shape. And I think I did a pretty good job when finding, finding the mouse to, to make. So anyway, see you all in the comments. Mm -hmm.